Thanks for joining us, everybody. We're going to be talking about simplifying Facebook lead generation. And for that, we've got two awesome guests with us, Marcus Willard and Logan Press from Street Text. Guys, I'm glad you have your names on there because sometimes when we change up our names to like Captain America and Hulk, I forget like that what the names are. So thanks, thanks for having your real names up there. Uh, so that was fun last time. Guys, I'm excited about this because we've got a lot of people tuning in on both sides right now. And tell me about why Facebook and why not anything else? Let's start with that first. For me, I mean, it's a, a big uh, component of demographics, right? I mean, where are our key demographics? Where are they? Where can we, where can we find them? Where can they find us? And it's, it's Facebook. So many people are on multiple other sites now. I mean, you look at, you know, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all those things. There's many, many, many people in all these different sites. But the one that they almost all have in common is Facebook. Everybody, not everybody, but a lot of the people who have these alternative accounts also have a Facebook account, whereas not everybody who has a Facebook account are living in these alternative spaces as well. And it's all, it's purposeful and it's, it's, who am I trying to uncover? Now, if I'm trying to run ads identifying first-time home buyers, well, I'm going to be on Facebook because first-time home buyers are on Facebook. But I'm certainly going to run that on Instagram as well because the demographic is much younger. So knowing the platforms, knowing the demographics, understanding the audience, understanding the media and the platform, you can then understand what type of ads best suit that platform. Different ads for different platforms. I would run something different on Facebook than I would on Instagram, mostly because Instagram is a much more artistic platform things that work on facebook may not work the same way the same way on instagram but also key demographic who am i speaking to who am i trying to uncover very important to me that's very true man good good point and just to answer a quick question holly i don't i don't hear an echo on our end but if anybody else hears an echo let us know on the chat uh, holly if you do hear an echo it looks like it's just you do me a favor just log out and log back in sometimes Zoom's got a little bit of a glitch there. But Marcus, what do you think, man? Why, why do we go all in on Facebook? Because I'm the same way. Long term. It's top of funnel. I mean, it's when you consider you spend a ton of money for the bottom of the funnel, whether it be Google or Zillow or truly a realtor, uh, everyone's fighting for that exclusivity. And they're spending lots of money to get that. Where with Facebook and Instagram or any top of funnel, you're interrupting their news feed today. Um, with an opportunity to connect and create a relationship. It doesn't mean it's your business tomorrow, but it means it's your business in the future. If you can come from a place of contribution, if you can come from a place of, um, you know, I'm a resource, I'm here to be there for you, to give, no matter where you're at in this cycle, um, even if you're not ever going to sell your house, I wanna be somebody you can trust. Um, and I think if you really take that approach and create a relationship and look for the tools that allow you to be front and center in terms of your personality and allowing them to experience you. You know, we always talk about body language and tonality is key, it's massive. We know video is king. So it's it's reshaping this mindset and idea that if you, if you tap into this place, naturally where people spend more than an hour, sometimes two or more a day, Tristan, you know, you and I are guilty of that and so is Logan. Um, you're, you're, you're in their feed, you're in their news feed on the daily basis. And so you pay Facebook to get into that feed, but you don't stop there. You actually connect with them on Facebook as well. And you, and you become a presence um, on their daily. I mean, a lot of people stop there with the sponsored element and they forget that you can actually organically connect with somebody and naturally be in their feed for no cost. But many people don't take that to the next level. So I think it's a combination of being in that space and paying Facebook for that space, but then are shooting for the organic relationship in that space as well. I, like I mean, that. and further to that, I mean, scalability and affordability. When you think of all the other lead platforms and I mean, the ability to have a billboard out there, how much money does a, does a billboard cost? I mean, look at a place like Malibu. How much do you think a billboard costs, you know, every month? I don't want to Where, know. Right? And they rely on people driving by and physically being in a physical space physically choosing to look at, interpret, and read your verbiage. And it's so so much more expensive. Whereas Facebook is a traveling billboard that finds the individuals where they are when you need to find them. 
right? I mean, through through all the different forms, I mean, the, the simple lead generation is one thing, but then when you can incorporate retargeting, you can identify these different individuals based on different life goals for all sorts of different reasons, and then retarget them with real estate ads. I mean, again, taking taking the the multi-pronged approach, it's 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 again, it's scalable. The second I find something that's working, I can I can add more to it. I can duplicate my efforts. I can bring in more. I can build a team around that. Right. So again, affordability and scalability, in my opinion, is is one of the key components of why Facebook is just so great. I think that's that's awesome. And also, I mean, the 70 percent of the population in the United States is on Facebook on a, on a month to month level. So that's massive. Right. 70 percent. That's 217 million people. So now that we we got that out of the way, let's go into the idea of creating simple Facebook ads and simplifying this process. Because I think as agents and as people, we just seem to overcomplicate everything, right? 100%. You got, all you're looking to do is interrupt their news feed. And you gotta use something that is not your typical real estate, you know, gimmicky home language. Everybody does that and um, <laughs> it doesn't seem to work. You know, Facebook, we, we talk about all the time, the ads manager is kind of a, a confusing place. Uh, Ira likes to call it the labyrinth of confusion. It, the, the truth is you need to break it down into really simple data. How much you're spending, what your cost per lead is. That's it. How much you've spent, what your cost per lead is. In our system, our five years plus of experience with Facebook, and we are, um, we have the designation of, of being an exclusive Facebook partner. So we get firsthand um, account help to make sure that our algorithm is top notch, that we're, we're going to tap into Facebook with best practices. And as things change, Facebook changes inevitably. Um, we're going to be there and embrace that change and make sure it favors you. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly just to kind of give you a heads up because people probably like to see things. Always. Um, when when you consider that our ads, and, and we call them funnels, but they're really ads, copies that you can just really simply set up and, and launch in a matter of seconds. Well, what we want you to know is that when you go out there, you have a coach, you have somebody to help you actually set these up properly, but it's really quite simple. And the key is we want you to see how they're performing across North America. So when you're like, hey, um, should I try a seller ad or a buyer ad or a listing ad or whatever you're, you're, you're looking to, to generate as far as leads are concerned? Well, their stats are there. It's showing you, for example, this particular funnel, um, if I put my mouse over it, this is our most popular as we start, has 21,920 people testing it this last month alone. Wow. Now, what does that mean? Well, it just means that if you look at the stats, six out of every 10 clicks are becoming a contact that's 60 percent. that's you know i don't i don't wear a marketing hat to know what people do out there in the real estate industry we we know that the average i think right logan is it like three and a half five percent i don't know um something something really small um and then this goes and gives you like a like a, a an ad performance on steroids now the key with that is understanding the nature of a dynamic funnel meaning you're not Unlike anybody's experience, maybe running Facebook ads, you're trying to capture all the information up front. Okay. If you go to an ad, um, you know, whether you're running it this way or, or another way, the, the key about this particular funnel, here's Wendy using an ad that says, if someone were to buy your Las Vegas or Henderson home, would you sell it, find its value in the current market? Now, it's pretty boring, right? If you look at it from your eye. Yeah. It, yet, it is our highest performing ad. Why would you say that, Logan? What, what makes this particular ad template so unique? So regardless of whether you use the map or, or anything else, um, you have to understand the importance of the image that you're using and its instant recognizability. So just relating to the map alone while we're on it is the last time you looked at a map, it was for a helpful activity. There was something that was guiding you. And understand that on social media, on Facebook specifically, when people are utilizing the platform, they're not going through and, and investigating every post, every ad for their merits. They're whipping through, looking for something that, that jumps off the page, something funny, something familiar, right? And we say this all the time, something familiar is what wins the day. 
our brains are tuned to look for shortcuts in the world around us. That's what keeps us alive. Your brain doesn't go, hey, Tristan, you got to remember to breathe. You got to remember to breathe. You got to remember to breathe. You're just doing that automatically. So before your eyes can look at an image as boring as this map and decipher what it is, our brain needs to simply have stopped our scroll and said, hey, there's something you better look at, eyes, right? So as we're whipping through Facebook, they see that image of a map. Typically, you get people to stop there because, again, their brain is screaming at them. There's something important in front of them. They then look at the map, and the first thing they look for is that little blue triangle or circle that's meant to guide them on their path. So now they're looking for where they are on the map. Again, it's human nature. We say it all the time. It's very much like looking at a group photo that you're a part of. Who's the first person you look at? Just because you look at yourself first doesn't mean you're a vain individual who's self-absorbed and only cares about themselves. It's human nature. I want to see the stupid look on my face if I'm making some silly face or whatever it is. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for myself. So same thing on a map. We know psychologically speaking, as soon as people see that map, they try to find where they are on the map. It's natural. Next, we just need to get their eyes up into our ad copy. And again, it's as simple as that. Now, again, consider your demographic. Who are you trying to attract? that map image seems to stop everybody, which is great. Then we use the ad copy to filter those who aren't homeowners, who aren't serious, who don't want to speak to us. Wonderful. But again, and I say this all the time, imagine who you're trying to attract by using the type of imagery that's attracting, uh, attractive to you. As a realtor, there's certain things I look for. I love the look of the gallows sign. I love it. I love a good for sale sign right? For me, that that works. I love architecture. I love nice homes. So if I see an image of a nice home with a for sale sign in front of it, who do you think it's going to attract? More people like me. If you don't think that myself as a, an ex-realtor or, you know, as a as an, maybe an existing realtor, you know, can find the value of my own home, I, I don't need you for that, if that makes any sense. You need to be very purposeful with the imagery that you're using and know who you're you know, uncovering and identifying. And so long as you're using imagery specific to realtors, you're gonna keep finding more realtors with your ads. That's very true. All right, so let's, let's dig into it and break it down a little simpler so that when people are looking to create this, like let's say they're not using street text, right? And, and obviously we want people to go into street text as you guys do everything for us. But let's say they're going to do this from scratch and they're going to take a picture of a Google map of where they're at. What would be that process in simplifying it so that they can do it on their own? What would that look like? Well, first and foremost, because of the housing discriminatory act, you got to account for 15 miles. So what a lot of people mistakenly do is they'll, you know, they'll choose their, their area, their farming area, and they'll start targeting it. And then Facebook saying, no, naturally we're gonna throw 15 miles around that. So you first adjust your text copy, your ad copy and your image to reflect 15 miles. That's first and foremost. So you would think, well, Las Vegas is massive. I'll just do that. Well, no. If you tap into 15 miles, you're actually tapping into Henderson and all these other communities in and around it. So you're no longer putting Vegas on the ad. Um, you have to actually include verbiage that encompasses all 15 miles. So that's number one, you adjust your image as well as your copy to reflect the 15 miles. But number two, here's where people make the mistake. Sure, you can go in and do that on Facebook and you'll do it with a Facebook lead at capture ad. Now, a Facebook lead ad is, is different than the way street text approaches it because we are digitally door knocking. So when someone comes into the space of clicking on that ad, the first thing they're going to, and I'm gonna share my screen for this, is that same experience. It's not, let me get all your information, your address, your email, time frame for selling, name and phone number all at once. You know, let me propose to you right now. I want to marry you. I want you to list my home. That does, that's going to cause, cost you a lot of money. And you're going to go days without leads in some cases. The problem with, with the, the full capture, I think, is that you're missing out on the click to contact opportunity. So the moment they submit their information is really the moment you're asking for a very simple piece of information. And really, what did they ask for in terms of if someone were to buy your home, would you sell it? Find its value in the current market. What's the first thing that we need? Tristan? You're, you got to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. <laughs> first, 
I was like, yeah, this is what you're blah, blah, blah. Okay, so <laughs> uh, first thing we typically need is the information from them, like the address and then- Yeah, the address, them. the address. And it's obvious, it's an obvious thing. It's like, hey, you want a, you want a home value? We need your address, right? So we ask for the address and we make it really easy to gather the address and it's upfront and it's, it's going to be coming at you six out of every 10 clicks. So obviously if you tap into a, a low cost per click model, which is ultimately what we're looking for with this type of ad in that first 500 people reached is where Facebook's making a very informed decision on their algorithm on whether or not that ad is going to be successful for you or not. Yeah. Um, this is the key because naturally in this type of funnel, by the way, whatever I put in here is automatically being pulled, that's automatically being captured. No matter what happens, that's captured in the dashboard. And then we have several strategies for address only, several oh, okay. strategies that we're seeing people actually win them and bring those into listings. I have a quick question on this. If somebody's trying to recreate this on their own, they're gonna to have to find their own landing page that can capture the address information, right? Yes, you're going to need to develop your own squeeze pages and landing pages. Okay. All right. I think that's one of the, the main components that people um, discover when they find street text is that, yeah, we have ads that work great. Yes, we have landing pages that work great. Yes, we have an email and text message automation. Yes, we have a community. But most importantly, we have all of that. If that makes any sense. We, we're not, you don't come to us to learn what to do and then have to go out and purchase a bajillion other products and piece it all together and, and have this kind of haphazard system. You come in and within... 10 to 15 seconds, realistically, once I show somebody how to do it properly, it takes no more than 10 to 15 seconds to build an ad that's appropriate to Facebook with all the best practice, everything that we know from the, you know, hundreds of thousands of ads that we're running, everything gets distilled down and baked into our ad template so that A, you know which ad template to start building from, B, that ad template has the, the most likelihood of finding success because we're not running one or two or 10 ads, we're running many, 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 many ads. And we're using that information to keep making our ads better, right? But also it launches with the appropriate landing page structure, making sure exactly like Marcus is saying, there's congruency from the ad that they clicked on into the landing page they got. We've tested this a bajillion times to know that you can't ask for all their information up front, exactly like Marcus is saying. You need to piece them through and get, get them comfortable giving you the information and you're paying for every click. You don't pay for per, per lead or per email or per phone number. You pay for the opportunity. So if they click on your ad and leave you no information because they got to a landing page that confused them or worried them or concerned them, you've paid for nothing. You're wasting your money, right? So we, we calculate all those things. But also, again, once a lead comes through, if they su supply a certain piece of information, we can start sending them drip automations. If they leave us an email, we start hitting them with drip emails, which you can include video in and make it, you know, messaging the way that you want it to be. If they include a phone number, great. We're going to have an automation where we're going to text them. And really it becomes important to be purposeful with your automations. That's kind of the next component we'll move into, I guess here, but the most First and foremost, it's having the ability to have everything done in a very limited amount of time. You don't need to be a, a Facebook expert. You don't need to spend hours and hours and hours building ads and landing pages and structure. It's done for you. Three clicks of a button, basically 15 seconds. All of that that I just described is done for you properly and set up in your area. That's, well, that's, that's the easy way of doing it. It makes total sense. So Marcus, let's go back to that screen when I'm inputting the address. I want to see what happens next so that people can at least visualize what they would need to do if they don't have street text. So at least they have a process like a, you already got the, they already have the ad. You talked about the 15 mile radius, right? Now, when they click on it, it takes them to, Hey, give me your address. But what happens after that? Sure. So the next component is the second most obvious, hopefully um, would be where can we send that to? And not so obvious for a lot of people who want the information up front. They're like, the phone number, of course. Um, but no, it's the email because email is easier for someone to give because, it, you know, it's like, yeah, I'll get, I'll, you can send it to my email. Um, and at the, this is a really important step for us because we embrace that the top of funnel is, is literally all about the experience you're providing. And so the moment they give email permission, because they have to give email permission to be able to move forward is in my mind the moment, the moment you have to really understand what's the next step in this process. It's not a, just to send some generic email. 
it's to understand that in this virtual digital day and age that we live in, the first thing you could do to really power, create a powerful experience is have a introductory video in there. Now my internet's kind of being slow, but I'll wait till it, it, it fires up. The key is, is, is video email. And I, I just found it. So I'll share my screen again. Um, it's video email. It's a solution. Um, there's, they've been around for 14 plus years. I know in the real estate industry, we, you probably heard of them. It's called bomb bomb, but there are other systems out there, but video email is massive. It's what changes the game because immediately it comes down to, you know, in this case, Wendy introducing herself, 20 second video, really going for the connection, pointing back to meet me on Facebook with a little link. Um, and it's, it's her, it's humanized. It's, you know, even with the, me not clicking on this video, Tristan, I have a three second kind of gif that's presenting her personality. So I don't know what she sounds like yet. I don't, I don't get the tonality side of this, but I yeah. get the body language. And for a lot of us, we're making split second judgment decisions on whether this, that this person, whoever this person is, is someone that I would actually invite into a conversation with. Very true, man. There's a lot that's happening right there. She's super friendly. Her body language is like inviting. I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to hear what she's got to say. And, and the key on this, this particular funnel is that this ad on average on this type of funnel, one in three addresses become an email submission. So if you're looking at like oh. one in three, so, so if you're looking at this click to contact ratio of six out of 10, we're basically going to say, well, for every address, for every three addresses you get, you're going to get one email for every three, e well, for every three emails you get, you're going to get a phone number on average and every market changes, right? I mean, if I'm doing this in Malibu versus Fargo, North Dakota, like that average is not an average anymore. I could, I could get like five phone numbers in the first day on, in Fargo in some cases, right? And then in, in Santa Monica or in, in, you know, in your area, Tristan, I might, I might have to spend a little bit more money to be, compete on Facebook. Mm -hmm. you know, I might not come in with the standard $9 a day ad that we test. I might come in at 20 because I'm, I'm, I'm working in a luxury home market. So you got to always consider what area you're in. You can't always trust the law of average. The law of average taking into consideration the data that I'm showing people is across Canada and U.S. combined. You know, and, and, and to me, that's, again, it's, it comes down to being very purposeful with what you do. Everything that you do should have a purpose. It's not, hey, I heard Facebook ads work. I should run a Facebook ad. Oh, I heard video works. I should have a video. Well, consider the process. Consider exactly, like, again, what Marcus is saying, the, the client's experience. What would you feel like if you clicked on that exact ad and now this has been the follow-up process? For me, the biggest mistake I find people make is, hey, I've offered a property valuation. I better get that to them right away. Oh my goodness, I didn't get them that property valuation right away. That's the main bullet in your gun. That's your silver bullet. That's the last piece of information that they're waiting for. So in my opinion, if I just fire a piece of paper off to somebody, who's Logan? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy that I, I stick on your, your fridge until the magnet wears off or somebody throws it in the junk drawer and it, it, gets, it, it gets misplaced real darn quick. I can guarantee that. Whereas once I've initiated any form of conversation, I now know I have a living, breathing individual on the other end and we've conversed in even, even text, Facebook message, a quick, hey, are you a real person? Yes, that's all, you know what I mean? Once there's been any open line of communication, period, now when I send them my value report, my RPR report, my home bot report, whatever I'm sending them, now when I come back to them with, hey, just want to check and see how you found that. Even if it's, I hated that information, I, I don't like you, whatever it is, they feel the need to reciprocate my activity. I feel more, more, there's more likelihood of getting any form of response if you've got some form of engagement early before sending them that piece of information. Right. Also, when you limit the number of people you have to do a CMA for or whatever it is, you can now increase the, you know, what it is that you're giving them instead of just firing off a, you know, a cloud CMA or a three minute RPR report. Now you can do virtual CMAs. You've bought yourself more time to do something a little bit more exciting. So in your, your automation, again, your first video, it needs to act as that great filter filtering the people, not necessarily from who want to sell their home to not, who wants to talk to me and who isn't interested in having a conversation, period, right? So my video, what I would say is, again, I can't say, hey, Tristan, this is Logan, because I'm going to take my first video and embed it in an automation 
which buys me that time. So what I would say is something like, hey, this is Logan with Remax in Kelowna. You've clicked on my Facebook ad requesting a property valuation. Now, my goal is to provide you the most honest and accurate valuation possible. However, in order to do so, I hope you understand, I'm going to need to see your home either virtually or better yet in person for myself in order to you know, help you set a true market value. Now, with that said, I realize not all my clients are ready to meet me in person right away. That's not a problem. You may just want an estimate of value. Happy to get you started with that. In order to get you started with your estimate of value, I'll need you to answer the following questions you'll find below this video. Answer them, I'll get you that guesstimate of value until you're ready to meet me in person for the real deal. Something like that. It's in that general realm of, you need me to see, you need me to see your house in person. You're not ready for that probably, not a problem. Let's get you your guesstimate that you came for. I just need to know that you're a living, breathing individual. Answer my random questions below. You get the idea, right? So as long as you, you paint that picture, they now know you're a real person who's really actually here to help them and you're gonna go above and beyond, they need to do something which is simply type a couple words into an email and send it back to you. Really easy, right? That's my opinion. Now you have them talking. Now I'm gonna do a, a, either a virtual CMA or an RPR report, whatever it is. But I've opened up that line of communication which absolutely needs to be there before I give them what they came for. Yeah, and you know, address, email, right? Those are the most- Marcus, what the hell happened to your leather jacket? I was getting a little warm. Oh, it's, getting warm. it's raining outside and I got the baseboard heater turned on. You were bringing back that grease lightning feeling. No, you know, um, <laughs> I just thought of that Johnny Depp movie with, with uh, Cry Baby. Oh, that one too. Look yeah, at that. that one too. Um, so let me, let me share the screen really quickly because I think there's no one way to do this. You know, um, we had a, a gal out of North Carolina, Katrina Higgins. And we highlighted her on our last mastermind, which by the way, our masterminds every Wednesday are where we bring the entire community together, similar to what you guys do, but we just, we just share wins and strategies and who's doing well, you know, and, and, and you, you'd be amazed. We have so many double digit transaction people right now, like just crushing, crushing their conversion. And for example, Katrina, what she does, she, she uses um, KV Core, but it, you could use Follow Boss, you could use anything you want, you could use Street Text as your CRM, but she adds them to her KV Core, she tracks them and sends them a Facebook message. <clears throat> she says she adds them on Facebook, so again, personal connection, and she sends them a video introducing herself, letting them know that she's a real person and working on their estimate. Okay, this is just a, you know, very fundamental easy steps to do. She always tells them in her video, this is just an initial estimate that she's providing. I love that word because it's like, hey, there's no way I could give you a true market value without actually seeing the home. And she says, I always ask them to book their meeting with me with a calendar link. So, right, it's like, if you have an email that you're sending out, the, the, I think the trifecta or the perfect email is open, it's watched, and you're getting a, a link clicked on that would connect them into your calendar. That's, that's what I'm looking for or into Facebook. Um, she sends them, then sends them the, the rough estimate. And then she sets them up for market reports of their area that they're gonna receive bi-weekly. Just very smart follow-up so far. And then she follows up. She follows up, you can't neglect the follow-up to make sure they received it, right? Probably asking questions about what they received. Checking in if they have any questions about their evaluation offers advice on how to prepare their home and buyers, you know, for that impression. And again, they need to book their meeting, book their meeting with her. And then she asks another appointment and then she gives them tips on how home selling works, you know, and, and these are the type of things that we go like, this is Katrina right here. And we go through this almost every Wednesday, we have a story just like this because there's, there's the step that everybody wants to know about generating leads. That's, that's, I think that's only one portion of the Facebook made simple. Facebook made simple is, is then understanding, well, how do I tap into Facebook without giving them all my money? It's not about branding. It's about, I need to be able to analyze this data into a cost per lead, right? Cost per opportunity to connect. And I need to look at lead information a little bit differently than if I was looking at leads coming from Zillow or Truly or Realtor, like people that are actively searching. These are people that you just interrupted their feed with. So it's no longer about, I want, you know, let me come list your home or let me, I'm, I have the, the perfect property I wanna show you. It's like, no, let's, let's create an opportunity to connect and create a discovery and see why that click happened. Because inside of this funnel, you get more information. Sometimes you don't, 
I mean, the, the deeper you go, you're going to learn about the condition of the property. But do you get that funnel information all the time? Not necessarily. You have to have steps ready for your address only. You have to have an effective campaign ready for your email plus address. If you get a little bit more information about, you know, this is the icing on the cake, age updates, perhaps, you know, 10 years old, needs, um, you know, renovated kitchen. Sell date. Immediately wanted three months within six months, six plus months. Just curious. Lots of just curious people, by the way. And that's usually just simply a defense mechanism. It's just, hey, I don't know who you are, where this is coming, what's gonna, you know, who's gonna be soliciting me after I provide this information. I'm just gonna say, tell you, I'm just curious. Deep inside, that's not the case all the time. When you click next, this is kind of the, the brand, the branding moment. And so for some people, if you have Facebook reviews, you can pull those in and really, you know, that's always nice credibility. If you have Facebook reviews, you can pull in your picture, you can pull in your, you know, little slogan here. This right here is great because if they do submit their, their phone number, that activates the text message component, the autoresponder. We call her Julie. You can call her whatever you want. But this is the key. It's like you need to know what's happening, what's even possible. And what we do with you is we work on exactly that. We want to know, you know, from the very first email, what does it look like and feel like, you know, are you doing something like this? What's your personal follow-up going to be like? How, how are you providing that information? Once you provided that information to them, do you have something set up just like Wendy where day four, this is going to go out. And then day, you know, six, this is going to go out, right? And then day nine, you know, she's introducing them into this case into a system called HomeBot, and this is going to go out. Do you know what your text messages are doing? So we have entire text message sequencing going out. And it's all about personalizing with you, right? For, for, this, for this case, I would get a text message in a couple minutes that says, hi, Marcus, this is Julie. I work with Wendy. I see you're interested in your home value. She's put a little home emoji right there, like a little fun one. So it doesn't feel like an AI. That's awesome, right? Awesome is, is not something you typically hear an AI use. Um, is there anything specific about your home that may affect its value, new flooring, updates, landscaping? All this to say, this entire sequence of information is going to be collected. And then when people respond, you actually actively engage inside the dashboard. And you're basically role playing as Julie to pass yourself the information and create an appointment opportunity. So you have so many moving angles. It's speed to lead for sure, but really it's more speed to the humanization of the process and really creating a connection. So that person feels like you're not in it just to sell them anything, but you're there to contribute to their lives, to give them the best value. And really it's how you present that information. So in my mind, you're basically, you get to narrate the experience you want them to have. As soon as you get the email collected, it's no longer about home value and have you done any updates or renovations to your home. It's all about how you are there to, to contribute to that person's life and really get them to open up about what their true intention is behind that click. I got a couple of people wanting to throw money at you guys. So uh, what's, the, what's the cost of street text? We, uh, we do offer um, a number of uh, options. First and foremost, it's important, um, you know, to, to come and do the trial. I, I believe very full heartedly in that we get a lot of people who have heard great things and want to just come and sign up right away. And, and, you know, don't discourage them entirely, but at the same time, we want people to come and test it and try it because we want you to make sure that it's the, the type of system that not only works, but it works for you. That's really, really important to us. Um, so we do have three options. I guess we'll quickly run through them. You can join us for a three months um, term. It's uh, $600 at the end of which you get to stay on month to month at 200 plus your ad spend, of course. Um, six months is $1,020 at the end of which you're at 170 moving forward plus your ad spend, of course. And the full year, which I'd say a lot of our clients are, are jumping to because I mean, it's a long-term solution. You're looking at 1920, which then becomes 160 month to month um, thereafter. And, uh, you know, the plan was uh, for, I believe, March of this year to have uh, increased our rates considerably. It was time. Uh, we saw that as a little unsavory given what's going on around us. So we've decided to keep them where they are, at least for the foreseeable future. So I think it's a great opportunity. At least, again, come try it for yourself. Make sure that, you know, before you've invested anything into our product, into our program, come get the, the training, come get the learning, come come meet the community, make sure that the ads work in, in the fashion that you're looking for. Let us help you set up your automations and suggest all these other endeavors that the way I look at it is, 
even for the people who don't continue with street text beyond their trial, I typically find that they've they've learned something that they didn't know before. Um, and even if it didn't work the way that we would expect, I would say the strong majority of them come back and, and we, we get them going, you know, two or three months down the road. It just seems to be the way that it happens. And typically the reason for that is because people brought in a bunch of leads. They didn't see them as going as quick as they'd, they would like. Then two to three months later, which is that typical gestation point, they start coming to life and listing homes and they go, oh my goodness, <laughs> all these leads that I had, you know, acquired back two months ago are now coming to life. And then we, we, we bring people back. So again, really important, come try the trial for yourself. Let us help you set up some good ads that work. And if nothing else, teach you a few things that you might not have learned otherwise. Here's the thing. You probably know of Janky Patel in your group. In the lab code agent group, oh, John, she's one of our uh, moderators. So yes, she's, she's awesome. one of the moderators. She's also one of our most successful clients at the moment. So the thing is, we're actually creating some material from Janky to create as a Street Tech Academy course, similar to like highlighting best practices, scripts, strategies. You know, what is it? Because a lot of it is a mindset shift when you're working the top of funnel. So you know, this academy course. You know, we, we probably, most of us who've been around Street Text for a while know about Donna Swansea and her ability to, to you know, she's done a couple hundred transactions since she started in 2015. Um, she doesn't like to be in the limelight anymore, but we created a, a course with her. I know that uh, both these courses, by the way, are available with some sort of cyber deal coming up in the Live Code Agent Group. So um, something to, to look out for. And that's the thing, you're, you've got a complete solution, coaching, training, resources, classes. It's, like, it's not for you to go in there and put on and reinvent the wheel. You just model yourself off people that have been successful. Find somebody that you gravitate towards. We have a lot of different personalities. Some, you know, Janky's completely different. You always got to think about the disc profile, right? I'm a DI. What are you, Tristan? I'm a DC. You see, Logan? Leave C. I'm a highly introspective and analytical. Um, anal or paralysis by analysis is a trait commonly attributed to me. I don't like to put anything out until it's perfect, at which time, you know, the information that I was covering maybe isn't new information anymore. <laughs> the opposite. I'm like, ooh, idea, Facebook Live. <laughs> You know, and, and, and that's what, it, again, you know, stepping back a, a, a small step, just when, as soon as you start talking about the disc profile, again, be very purposeful in your approach. So for me, you know, I like to know the type of individual I'm potentially going to be speaking with because there's a, a big difference in the way I'm going to communicate value. If I know that they're a, um, you know, investor who cares about the, 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 the dollars and the cents, you know, speaking of family gatherings and engagements and stuff they don't care i want to know the dollars i want to know the cents. i don't want you to waste my time with anything whereas somebody else who is more emotionally tied to their property they don't want to know necessarily the dollars and the cents while that's important they want somebody who's willing and, and ready to relate to them so be again purposeful in the questions you ask people so for for the majority of real estate agents and what we see all the time the two questions people ask most often are um you know really the questions in general are relating to the property itself tell me about your home tell me the square footage is your recent renovations things like that questions that i don't feel evoke a very strong emotional connection whereas somebody who's more um you know into the investing side, they may be more willing to say, okay, I'm going to talk to the, 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 the ones and the zeros with you. Whereas again, the questions I prefer to ask my clients are, what's your favorite feature of your home currently? And if you could change any one thing, what would it be? The reason I ask those questions for me is because, again, they make people feel something positive and happy, which is a happier emotion to convey. If I ask you, what's your favorite color? It makes you feel happy. Mine is green. It makes me, I like telling, hey, my favorite color is green. It's something I love. It's something I like, right? If I tell you list, the, list all four colors or you know, list, list the, the, the three primary colors, whatever it is, it's important to know what they are, but it certainly isn't you know, a, a, a question that evokes an emotional response. So you get what I'm saying is think of the, the type of discovery you're trying to make. And if you're trying to fit somebody on that disc profile, ask them a question that they're going to answer that, that you're able to then fit them where they are so you know which type of conversation you're needing to have with that individual. Incredibly important. Again, be very purposeful with everything that you do, including the questions that you're asking. And if you're not getting the type of responses you're hoping for, change the questions you're asking. Pretty obvious.
I would say, Tristan, as well, that this is not a set it and forget it program. For anybody that wants to be successful with street text, you're, you're not just investing and thinking that your business is going to change. It's, it's all about understanding that you're going to learn from the community. Like you need to actually think about time blocking and creating the space, the mental space, but also the time in your calendar to really learn the system, how to customize each and every piece of it from the text messaging to the autoresponders and the email drip to looking at integrations like bomb bomb and homebot in the United States and, and seeing why people, you know, what their mailers are, what their address only solutions, things like free, you know, true people search and Spokio and all these different ways to create connection. What are they sending in the mail? How are they taking these simple address onlys? Um, what about the buyer campaigns? We all, no one talks about buyers, but so many of the buyer ads that we run actually are double-ended deals. Buyers are sellers on Facebook. And Janky has been a perfect example of that. She's gotten so many double-ended deals where someone comes in looking for something they want to buy and we find out they have to sell because they want to know what's available first and foremost. And then they got something to sell. The top of funnel is meaning you're getting to them first. You're not even, they weren't even there on Facebook thinking about what anything to do with, with buying or selling anything, but you got them thinking. You went from a subconscious passive scroll down their newsfeed to saying, ooh, I want to see that list of properties in Los Gatos under a million with the pool, you know, whatever that was. And then all of a sudden you find out by asking the questions that they have a home they need to sell before they can actually purchase. And you're like, oh, well, okay, let's, let's do this, right? And so um, same, same thing with the seller side. It's like, don't neglect that if you're going to sell their home, they have to go, they want to go look for something too. So you're getting this opportunity to really have double-ended deals almost in every opportunity um, that comes your way. A lot of people forget about that. So I think it's, it's like, it's the top of funnel. The top of funnel is embracing that you need to have systems and nurturing processes in place. You also, you know, you initiate the relationship and create a great experience so that you get the know, like, and trust established. What are you gonna do to nurture that in their own time? Because it's not on your time, it's their time frame. Are you willing to embrace that there might be somebody that comes in today that's a year out? And what are you going to do to stay in front of that person? And how are you going to add value into that person's life along the way? So I think that's what you have to be willing to embrace and learn. It's not going to be some generic, you know, I don't care if you have FirePoint or follow up boss or whatever. Email is good. Systems are good. But nothing takes the place of you personally following up. And you got to figure out how to do that effectively. That's true. Well, with that said, what's the learning curve here in the seven days? What does that look like? What should people expect in the first seven days? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really it's important for us to have that conversation to figure out what they're looking for. That's that's really important. Is again, just like every lead that's clicking on your ad, looking for property valuation. There's something that they're missing. There's something that they need that they're not able to find on their own. So for us, I mean, it's it's different in, for every different individual for every area. And I think that's the 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 value of having again an assigned coach when you join a platform is that it's not hey, there's a cookie cutter formula to follow come in and do these things and you get you know the, the type of success we expect everybody will dictate their own personal success and and um you know decide what is successful to them some people just want to come in and generate a, a ton of cheap leads they have a follow-up system and structure in place that they've been you know curating for years they don't need help with their follow-up they need to supercharge their leads great that's our focus other people come in and go like I haven't had any luck with Facebook ads. You know, maybe my ads suck. Maybe my follow-up sucks. So what I um, typically recommend to them is, hey, let's maybe pause your seven-day campaign. Let's not run ads yet. Let's set up your follow-up. Let's talk about video. Let's talk about automations. Before you spend a dollar on ads, if you don't have an effective follow-up structure in place, what are we doing here? We need to get that started. So I do that. And I know Marcus does that as well as suggest to people tell you, let's pump the brakes on your seven days. You can be in the account Let's just not run any ads. Let's help you get everything set up, the structure in place. Then as soon as you've, you've got everything good, great. Now let's build, uh, you know, good ads and start the, hit the, hit the start button, so to speak. Let the mechanism work what, after it's been properly built is the right way to put it. Um, again, I always liken it to building a home. You got to build a foundation. If you just take, you can take the best prefab home known to man and put it on a faulty foundation. What's going to happen? 
right? You can't take something pre-built and make it work for everybody. You have to build your own foundation. You have to build from the ground up and it's got to be done right. So regardless of what you feel you're missing, it's a great opportunity to come sign up for your trial, meet your coach, tell us what you, what you like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. Let us help you, you know, fill those gaps and, and come up with an appropriate strategy. And if you like what you hear, great. You get to keep working with street techs, nothing, nothing to lose. If you don't like what you've heard, no harm, no foul. You move on and, and uh, we, we talk again in the future. I, I was going to add one more thing, Tristan. I know you're, you're, you're uh, I, I did post something and I think it's, um, we need to emphasize that part of what makes Street Text unique is that we've learned something called a split test. And a split test is essentially split testing the audiences because 15 miles is so massive in some cases that's hundreds of thousands if not a millions of people so you can't assume that an ad copy and template and funnel is good or bad or indifferent until you split test it and a split test is running at least conservatively speaking three identical ads for the first 24 hours with the same copy same image same targeting the only variable is the actual audience itself and we're looking for the lowest cost per click profile. We're looking for the lowest cost per lead profile. We're looking for the lowest cost for everything ultimately and also the areas that you prefer to be within that 15 miles that you're willing to serve with obviously the most complete information. So we've really learned how to tap into Facebook's algorithm given the split test and we know A-B testing. But split testing and A-B testing is essential. So what we recommend when everybody starts a trial is that you get a coach and you figure out what address or zip code comes to mind of which you're willing to drive north south east and west for 15 miles and no nothing's perfect you can hack that a little bit that's why you have a coach if you're living if you live near the water we can move that circle out a little bit to the ocean or near the mountains or and so forth but you got to get comfortable with that idea and that concept because if you're not embracing the 15 miles 24 kilometers in canada now um you're missing out you're not learning that any one of these ads can crush it just the same as any one of these ads could be a dead. And it, you could be spending money and Facebook is just spending it. You're not getting really anything from it. You're just branding yourself and you're making um, conclusions because you weren't setting these up properly. So if you're going to run, the learning curve is all about if you're willing to do this, do it right, meet with the coach, come to the training, invite yourself into the community, into the masterminds, and, you know, essentially get, a, get us along the side of some people that have been successful with it. Don't try to do this yourself or else you're going to quickly find out that that experience is, is not going to be what you thought it would be. Yeah, that's very true. I, I love what, what you guys are saying, which is get your follow-up in place first before you even start throwing those ads into place, which brings up a question for me, guys. With the trial, if somebody signs up today, and it takes them like three, four days to set up that follow-up. Does the trial start after that or how does that work? The way that we usually do it is seven days of trial runtime or, or ad runtime. So my recommendation for, for most people is to come in um, instead of building your ads blindly, um, don't do that. Come in, meet with your coach, come to, we have our own, we have daily live training. We have um, four sessions a week, one, one every day, except for Wednesdays, where we take everybody through the basics of, of everything you need to do live Q and a, the whole, whole meal deal where you get a good explanation as to what everything is, but yeah, come in my recommendation, turn off your ads. Don't, don't run any ads with us until you've got your follow-up in place. We leave seven days as kind of a, a hard cap because we, we're not idiots. And we see people gaming the system, coming back with a secondary email and trying to acquire all these free leads. It happens, right? So we need to set some boundaries, of course. Our idea of when a trial is done, though, is when we we know that we've shown you what we expect to see in your area. You know, I don't mind doing running a duplicate trial when when the need you know calls for it. Um, that's not a problem for us. It's the seven days is so. We're not getting gamed by other people being silly, of course, but for us, again, we want to make sure that you get the experience we feel that we're able to offer you. And if that means doing another trial, extending you a couple days, that's not a problem for us. Again, we're not selling snake oil here. Um, we really know that it works. We just need to make sure that it works for your specifications, right? If you, if, if the way that you're looking at this is I need to generate a hundred leads day one and close three deals in seven days. And it's not going to, it's not going to happen that way. If those are your expectations, well, then this won't work. That's not the way that this works. I'd second that. And I, you also got to understand that not every split test is going to work. 
you got to be willing to spend a little bit more up front, especially in some of the more competitive markets to test so that you can find that good ad performance and ride that ad performance out on a daily basis. So split testing, A-B testing means you're, you're willing to embrace that. I got to play the game a little bit in the beginning. I got to, you know, I'm not going to go to the blackjack table and play one hand and, and assume that I'm going to get a blackjack. I'm going to go to the table, play three, four, five, maybe six hands. And that's different ads to find that one good ad that I can run with indefinitely. Because you need to beat the house or the house is going to win every time. And so we're going to show you how to beat the house and game Facebook so that you can win every time. Yeah, and exactly like Marcus is saying, and he mentioned in his in his um, chat there, um, you know, people are always asking, you know, and, and, and Tristan, I know that you're always looking for things that people, we can help with that are outside of the street text platform, the street text structure. And I think that any piece of information we can impart on anybody, it's A, the split test, the, the necessity to build at least three ads, let them run and compete against each other for one day. But the other thing is don't waste money on Facebook. What Facebook is trying to do is make sure that they can make as much money, maximize their return on every ad they allow to, to be run. So if they have an ad running at $9 a day, what Facebook's really doing is figuring out within the first 500 people how relevant it is to those 500, which ties to the greater size of your audience. What they're doing is saying, okay, Within these first 500, we're really only getting one, maybe two clicks a day. Well, at $9 a day, we need two clicks in a day. We need 450, great. Your cost per click is now gonna be $4.50 because they need to maximize how much money they have available to them. So if your test audience doesn't take strong action on the ad, you will then pay more money per click moving forward. Facebook takes an, a non-relevant ad, charges you more per click to maximize their return. Whereas within your first 500 people, if more people are clicking, Facebook says, hey, this is a relevant ad that's going to get a lot of daily clicks. Well, we don't have to charge 450 a click. Maybe we charge a buck a click, right? It's all tied to your test audience. So you don't need to run an ad. And again, regardless of whether you build these on street text or through ads manager, through any other platform on earth, you do not need to run an ad for more than 24 hours to understand what it's going to do. Good ads do fall off the cliff eventually, whether it's after a week, a month, a year, good ads I've seen, I've seen plummet. Bad ads never get good. I've never seen a poor performing ad suddenly just take off for no unforeseen reason. It, now, it doesn't happen. So if within your first 24 hours of runtime, you're not seeing the type of leads you're looking for, your cost per click is too high, you're not bringing in full leads, emails and phone numbers, might be time to turn that ad off. There's no need to watch it for a week to see what it's going to do. If it's bad within 24 hours, it's going to be bad after 48 and plus, right? So three ads typically is our recommendation. Like Marcus said, you can do more, of course, you can be more aggressive and you may need to be more aggressive based on where you are. Places like Malibu, you may need to do an extra split test or two. You may need to spend a bit more money. That's fair. But in the majority of the places we cover, one three ad split test should be what uh, what you need to see in order to find one ad that's producing and performing the way that we like to see. I love that, guys. I'm just responding to uh, a Facebook person here. There's there's a couple of more questions I'd like you to answer really quick. Um, I'm just putting in street text. When you go on streettext.com, if, if you don't go to our specific link, it doesn't matter, but go there. You can then sign up for the free trial there as well. All right. So can you explain to, to people that are listening in that when they sign up, it's only the, the platform that they're getting for free. They still have to pay for the marketing piece to Facebook, right? Correct. And, and I put a post in there earlier that says the street text trial is free. Your ad spend isn't. So if you're going to spend money, do it wisely. Don't just run an ad, meet with a coach, set up the split test. Our recommendation is about three ads for the first 24 hours if we're tapping into sellers we can do buyers and listings as well but if we're tapping to sellers three ads for the first 24 hours let them all accumulate about ten dollars of ad spend on on each ad before you decide which ad has got the best performance and your coach works with you on discovering what that truly is because it's not always the obvious the low cost per lead um and then after that your ad is going to spend on the daily so if you found a good ad you let it continue at around that nine to $10. Again, that $9 is just the average spend across North America. We will have to talk to you specifically to the market you're in to give you a better idea of what we think the best start is for yourself. 
Um, but you can kind of put that in mind. So when you're thinking about long-term commitments for, for Facebook ad spend, typically make sure you have about $300 conservatively speaking on a monthly basis, maybe a little bit more if you're doing some testing and A-B testing. And obviously more if you want to think um, buyers and marketing your own listings and kind of customizing some stuff. So that's where I would, I would uh, you know, we'd have that conversation with you. And also it's important to uh, identify your appropriate budget that you can remain running at. I always say, um, try, we like the $9 per day to start testing, but if you know you're going to be running $5 a day long-term, test at five, because the last thing you want to do is get a good running ad at say $9 and then change it down to five. You've reset your ad performance in most cases. Uh, another item of importance that doesn't matter where you build your ads. Um, worst thing you can do to an ad is pause it for any, any more than three days. As soon as you pause an ad for 72 hours, when you go to unpause it, it goes through its initial testing phase again. And even though your likes and shares and comments may be or will be saved still, um, the actual algorithmic plugin has been removed. So you're starting fresh. Same thing can be said by adjusting a budget more than 25% its current value. We've seen the same thing happen. You go from nine down to $5 in one day, Facebook says, there's a major change here. We got to retest this ad from scratch. So if you want to stay within the realm of, you know, workability, whatever you want to call it. If you want to get down to five bucks, not a problem. Go from nine to eight, let it sit for three days, go from eight to seven, let it sit for three days for two reasons. First, you don't want that ad to reset. Second, I like to know the implication every single dollar has. So if I lower it from nine to $8 and I find my lead flow is now exactly where I want it to be, I'm probably going to leave it there, right? So do things in small little increments so you can really truly feel their impact, but then also you're not running the risk of resetting an ad's performance. I love it. I love it, guys. All right. So for everybody that tuned in and there's a few people that left early, too, but there were over 400 people who registered for this. So what we'll do is we'll send you guys the list and hopefully tomorrow or Friday, you guys can send out an email saying, hey, here's the thing and give them a free option to uh, sign up for the seven, seven days and whatever else you guys want to add in there. I think that would be great. Is that OK? That's great. I have, I, I saw one question come in. I thought it's important to, to address. Greg says, what's the evidence that the ROI on this $500 a month, street text to Facebook cost is best uh, from the approach versus any other real estate ways uh, someone could spend 500 bucks. And I would say that's, that's a tough question to ask unless you're understanding the true nature of the top of funnel versus the bottom of the funnel. The top of funnel is one that if you invest now is going to give a ton later. It's not for your business tomorrow. It's for your business in the future. It's for your ability to create and, and invest into relationships without expecting anything in return, coming from contribution and watching your, your influence just grow, grow and grow. Um, so anybody that's gonna do this type of solution, you gotta think long-term, you gotta think the year. That's when you're gonna get a double digit, triple digit ROI type of stuff happening. It's not your 90 day fix. Yeah, to, to break this down dollars and cents wise over a year, it's one of my favorite things to do. It sounds really salesy, so I typically don't do it on my normal calls, but just to break this down for you, it makes sense to me. When you think of long term, let's say you pay the nineteen twenty to us, then you're running one ad at $9 a day that hits its $9 maximum budget for 365 days in a row. It probably wouldn't do that, but let's say it does. If my math doesn't, um, you know, I believe it's 5250, let's call it 5500 in total right? Let's, let's move that up further and say that you're running a secondary ad. Let's call it six grand a year, right? So if you, in a sense, max out on what we typically deem a, a max budget, you're talking in and around six grand for the year in most areas, including street techs, including your ad spend. Now that is two thirds of a deal or, or half a deal in most areas, right? In areas like we are in Tristan, I know you are, I mean, that's a, that's an eighth of a deal, <laughs> Right. So, I mean, realistically speaking, it's it's when you think of this as, hey, I'm spending five hundred dollars a month. Well, I better be closing two or three deals a month. No, that's not we don't care about how many deals you're closing a month. How many deals are you closing a year? That's where it becomes important, because like Marcus is saying, you're not filling tomorrow's database and pipeline. You're constantly adding to a, a database and a pipeline that should never be, be stopped. You should never stop adding to your database. And Street Text is, is one of you know, the many solutions that you're going to need. You need your referral business. You still need other, other avenues. We're not going to take over absolutely all of your lead generation, though a lot of our clients do say that we're 
their only lead generation or at least their primary. Um, again, it's, it's a multifaceted approach. And what we're trying to do is help you put it all together and teach you things that you can take elsewhere as well. That's kind of a, and again, and we, we alluded to it a bajillion times already, our community. Um, the reason we, we partner with, with people like lab code agents is because you guys emulate a lot of what we try to do as well. You know, we're, we're, we're not a repetition of each other. It's, it's collaboration. And I think that's important is we see what happens in the LCA group all the time. And it's, it's exactly the kind of community we ourselves are trying to build as well. So, you know, the mingling of the two, it just makes sense. It's a natural fit. So we, we always relish the opportunity to come on these meetings. And we feel the same way about you guys. So thank you for being on. Thanks for everybody who stuck on after. It's, it's an awesome thing. You should try it. Free trial, streettext.com. Marcus and Logan will be there as well, continuously helping you out. So for everybody tuning in, if you don't see us again for the rest of the week, have a happy Thanksgiving in the United States. I know it's in a different time in Canada, I think, right? When is this? We already passed our Thanksgiving, but we do we do it twice. Most most families here at celebrate both. So. That's awesome. All right. Well, happy Thanksgiving to everybody, to you guys. Thanks for being on. We appreciate you guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.